Today I'll be reviewing the Jerry CE2 Clip-On Thermal Imager, produced by Infrared. Infrared is a Chinese company known for producing reasonably affordable but also reasonably high quality infrared devices, such as the Jerry series. The Jerry series has a total of four models. It has the CE models, which have an integrated battery pack that would be situated right here. So there would be an 18650 sticking out the back of this in order to provide onboard power. The CE devices, of which this is one, uh, require external power connected via a circular connector. It's not entirely clear to me if the C series devices can also run off external power or if they can only run off internal power, but this one can only run off of internal power. Then there's the C and CE2 and the C and CE5. They have similar angular resolution, that is their peak sharpness is similar, however the 5 series has a wider field of view. If you look in the right places, the 2 series is significantly cheaper than the 5 series, which makes it frequently a more affordable option for people who don't really care about the extra field of view afforded by the CE5. The device is made of a mixture of plastic and aluminum. It feels reasonably sturdy. The tolerances are reasonably good for a Chinese device. Uh, and overall, it physically seems fairly robust. The controls are fairly simple for basic operation. There is uh, this wheel, which has a detent to keep it in the off position. Once it's out of the off position, there's very little friction, so it's easy to move, uh, which arguably is not a great thing, but uh, all it really controls is the brightness of the device. So the device reads in uh, thermal data through this germanium lens. It also has a little photodiode here, which I believe is for automatic brightness adjustment, which I am not currently using. Uh, and then it has this little display, which it uses to project the thermal overlay into a night vision goggles field of view. Uh, this does come with a little adapter that lets you use it without a night vision goggle. However, it's not very bright and it's fairly difficult to use. So I would suggest only buying one of these things if you have a night vision monocular or binocular to pair it with. So besides the twisty control, we also have this button right here, which is used for interacting with menus and such, and the twisty control itself also acts as a button. Not much more to be said about this unit. Uh, honestly, I'm pretty satisfied with the physical characteristics of this thing. It's reasonably small, reasonably lightweight, doesn't add a ton of heft to your night vision goggle. As far as actually attaching to night vision devices, the way it works is you put on one of these little quick detach rings so you can just pop that open and it comes right off uh, and it's semi-adjustable there's a screw so you can fit a variety of diameters uh, and then you can just you know slide that on or off if you want to uh, and then it has this little clip interface here and the jerry device just slides into that clip and then it's retained by this little push to release lever so if you want to take that off you push down on this lever and pull it out. Otherwise, it stays in there pretty well. One downside of this setup is there's very little clearance between the front of the PVS-14 lens and the uh, imager and the sort of imager base of the Jerry. So you lose the ability to do close focus on this goggle. You can only unscrew the lens a teeny bit, which lets you focus at infinity, but not much closer than infinity. So that's a little bit of a downside. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that design. It's really easy. You can take this on and off. So if you have multiple night vision goggles you want to use, it's, it's pretty easy to switch between them. And it came with multiple sizes of ring. I'm not sure what the other sizes were for, but uh, it came with a couple that fit a PBS-14. As far as the battery pack goes, this is one of the weak points of the device, in my opinion. Um, it looks reasonably skookum from the outside, but there are several issues with it. One is that uh, it is sized only to take very, very short, unprotected 18650s. So you cannot use protected cells, and I have had trouble even fitting certain unprotected cells inside this battery case. So my suspicion is that they've, they've sized it for basically small, cheap Chinese cells, and they didn't do a lot of dimensional testing for uh, maybe potentially larger Japanese cells and certainly not for protected cells. I don't think it would have been difficult for them to 
add support for that, but they didn't. And even with really short cells, like unpro fully unprotected cells, you'll see that this doesn't actually close all the way. The O-ring is partially exposed. I'm not really sure how much waterproofing I'm gonna get out of this. I'm sure it'll be fine in the rain, but I wouldn't wanna submerge it for very long. So that's not ideal. And then on top of that, and the threads are not good. You might be able to hear that. They're really grinding uh, and they release a lot of powder. Uh, and then these little battery retainer caps, these rubber things, they suck. They come off really easily. They're not very good at retaining. Uh, they're very sort of soft and, and pliable and they're, they're easy to remove accidentally. Uh, on top of all that, the battery compartment seems to have some electronics in it and it has some parasitic drain. So uh, it looks like if you leave batteries in here, they can die after uh, maybe a couple weeks of disuse, which is also uh, not ideal. A battery pack should probably not drain batteries that quickly. Let's see. Um, as far, going back to the device itself, beyond the physical characteristics, just in terms of the sort of signal processing and uh, visual characteristics, there are a few different modes to this device. First, we've got the scout mode, which basically only shows you things above a certain temperature to try to cut down some background noise. Then we have this outline mode, which is relatively sensitive. It basically shows you anywhere there is a sudden transition in temperature. It's easier to detect things, but it produces a fair amount of noise. And then there's the normal mode, which shows you the entire temperature gradient. This mode is so noisy as to be basically useless unless you have some hot objects in the background. Back to the primary device. There are a few things that I'm not a huge fan of here, mostly around the software and the infrared performance. So the resolution and the frame rate are both a bit underwhelming. Uh, the maximum identification distance is, is not that impressive. Uh, I would say it's, it's probably under 100 yards for a human, which is not great. Uh, there's quite a bit of lag. In fact, I suspect that there might even be more than one frame of lag between when the image is captured and when it's put on the display. Uh, so that when you're moving your head, there's a noticeable uh, sort of diff distance between uh, what you're seeing under night vision intensification and what you're seeing under thermal. The brightness mapping algorithm is not great. Uh, if you get any of the sky in view, that might cause the algorithm to sort of blow out and start lighting up anything that's even uh, ambient temperature like trees as super bright. So you often run into situations where the, the entire tree line is lit up and you can't see anything useful. Uh, this is not the only device to have that problem, but uh, I, I have some devices that don't seem to have that as much of an issue. So who knows? Um, the detection or scout mode is not very good. Uh, I, I think they maybe have just done a weird job of uh, picking temperature cutoffs or something. The performance is a lot better in cold weather, but uh, it, it should be able to do a better job than it does in like moderately warm weather, like even 60 degrees or so Fahrenheit, this device will have uh, trouble potentially reliably and uh, with high contrast showing reasonable heat sources. Uh, a final issue with this, which I, there's not really a direct way around it, but this does cut off some light to the night vision goggle. I would say that this probably reduces night vision goggle brightness by 10 or 15% if you are running at the gain limit of your goggle. And if you're not, then it'll just you know introduce some, some additional noise because your goggle has to work harder to amplify the available light. Overall, this device is a pretty good deal. You can get it for around $2,000 if you know where to look. Just be aware that there are some fairly significant design limitations, as you might expect for a lower-priced Chinese-manufactured device like this.